co-sleeping or crib sleeping? Which one is the better option for your child and their overall development? That is the million dollar question. So let's discuss. Hi, hello, and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I am Dr. Jasmine. I am a clinical psychologist as well as a mom of two little girls, and I am so excited to dive into today's video. We're gonna be talking all about sleep. What is the better option? Is it crib sleeping? Is it co-sleeping? I'm gonna share a little bit more information about each of the options. Let's weigh the pros and cons. I'll ultimately share my professional opinion as well as my personal experience. Uh, my girls are now three and four, and I will say we have have come a long way when it comes to sleep and we have an interesting journey so I'll share with you guys how we've approached it hopefully that answers some of your questions and helps you know what is the better option for you and your family okay so let's start with co-sleeping so what is co-sleeping it basically just means you're sharing the bed with your child now there's different forms of co-sleeping there is like where you have a separate bassinet or like a dock tot or there's a separate attachment that attaches to your bed where they sleep or where you don't use any of those things and they just literally sleep next to you. Uh, Co-sleeping is actually gaining more popularity in the United States over the last 20 years or so. There was a recent statistic where it went up from 4% in 94 to about 24% in 2015. So it is get, gaining more popularity, but I still feel like in the parent community, uh, in the mom community, there's a lot of shame around, you know, disclosing whether or not you are choosing to co-sleep. I know a lot of women don't feel comfortable sharing with their child's pediatrician uh, the fact that they are co-sleeping because they know that it is not recommended. And that's what I will say is that um, the American Academy of Pediatrics is clear that they don't recommend co-sleeping for infants four months and younger. Now they absolutely are advocates for you room sharing with your child. So, you know, putting their crib or another sleeper next to you and sleeping in the same room as your child. Uh, and they say around six to 12 months is an optimal, you know, window of time where you're sharing the room with your child when it comes to sleep. But in terms of co-sleeping, they are, they don't recommend it for infants four months and younger. And the reason for this is because of the correlation between co-sleeping and safety risks such as suffocation, uh, sudden infant death syndrome or SIDS, as well as other uh, related injuries and deaths. When we talk about co-sleeping, there are also clear cultural and historical factors at play here. I mean, many cultures have been co-sleeping for thousands and thousands of years. So let's talk about the pros of co-sleeping first. I mean, the pro uh, number one is that it is more convenient, right? You don't have to wake up in the middle of the night and stumble around you can tend to your baby right there. Uh, it also allows you to more quickly tend to their needs uh, because again, <laughs> you're right there. It's also way more convenient for breastfeeding moms and it's a more intimate connection, right? You're snuggling with your baby and you're there with them during that time while you are sleeping. So there's some pros to co-sleeping. Okay, let's dive into the cons. So number one con being that, and research backs this up, that the older, your infant gets the harder it is to sleep together right the harder it is for your child to sleep with you as well as for parents in general to uh, fall asleep and stay asleep when uh, their child is sleeping right next to them that's usually the messages that I get from parents when it comes to co-sleeping they're like okay I'm I'm done with co-sleeping we had a wonderful journey and now I'm done because it's harder for me to go to sleep or stay asleep it's just not as restful of a sleep or I'm just ready to have my bed back and and that is the con and another con related to that is that as your children get older they have different sleep needs you have different sleep needs than your child depending on if you have more than one child they're gonna have different sleep needs than each other and so trying to sleep all in one bed is really hard right and it's hard to not disrupt each other and to stay asleep and all of that right it kind of gets a little complicated especially as they get older another con related to that is that co-sleeping can become a crutch right where you're 
child gets used to falling asleep next to you or next to your partner and so it can be really hard for them to sleep independently or even go back to sleep without the help you without your help and also you know there's less <laughs> opportunities for privacy between you and your partner if you have a partner so that can become a challenge especially when you're doing it for long lengths of time okay now let's talk about cribs I mean I feel like they kind of the pros and cons kind of coincide with each other right where the cons are that you know you have you have, might have to travel farther it's less convenient for you right um, you're less quickly able to tend to their needs because you're farther away but the pro being that you get your own room um, if you're if their crib is in a you know in their own room in a different room than yours um, you get more privacy and that they're able to learn eventually how to independently fall asleep now let's talk about my experience and kind of how we approached this whole sleep arrangement so before I became a mom, I will never forget, I was pregnant with my first daughter and I was talking to a family friend who I really, really respect and she had just had a baby and her second baby and she was telling me about sleep and one of the things that really stood out to me that she shared, she was like, do not let your kids <laughs> sleep in the bed with you. Um, she said it just wasn't a, it, like basically to the effect of it's not a good habit to start and um, that you really should avoid it. So I was like, okay, that's really interesting advice. Um, I will take that into consideration. Of course, I did my own research and I just always remembered that piece of advice. Um, and so I became a mom. <laughs> <laughs> and of course my first daughter uh we struggled a lot when it came when it came to her sleep she was she had colic it was really hard to get her to settle um and sleep was a major challenge for the first i would say first six months especially i tried everything so we did we tried close sleeping we tried the bassinet we tried the uh bassinet in our bed we tried a bassinet you know on the floor we tried to get things that were you know rocking and soothing and playing music she did not want none of that y'all she was like no 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 i didn't feel comfortable co-sleeping with her i was too afraid of rolling over and just I, it scared me it was it was scary so i i never did co-sleeping so around around six months is when we did uh, sleep training and where we where she started to sleep independently in her own crib in her own room but before that we <laughs> again we were fumbling around y'all for the first several months and sleep was a disaster and it was really hard it was really hard and then I will say it was much easier for our second daughter I think we felt way more prepared uh, I felt way more like okay I know what I'm doing um and just like this is what we're gonna be doing uh versus you know you the first child here you're just kind of fumbling around in the dark <laughs> um and so yeah and I think too their sleep and their sleep needs and just everything their personalities and temperament is just completely different so of course that plays a role in our overall experience uh but for my, both of my daughters we did sleep train and they have been they've always been in, in a crib and so let me know in the comments below thumbs up this video let me know if you want to hear more about sleep training more about the research on sleep training and just my general thoughts about it I know this is it's a highly controversial topic and there's a lot of conflicting advice just depending on who you uh, uh, read or listen to so let me know if that would be helpful for you guys because I know it is a huge pain point as parents is just navigating all things sleep so just based on my own research and my own personal experiences I am a fan if you haven't already been able to to tell I'm a fan of crib sleeping we recently went to Atlanta which check out the vlog if you haven't already and we uh, co-slept with both of our daughters they're now three and four but it was a challenge y'all not only just practically speaking because they're wild sleepers and they're moving around so I was constantly waking up in the middle of the night but also to uh, from a standpoint of just being able to have my own space and my own time and being able to connect with my husband 
I mean, there was none of that. And since we didn't want to go to bed, so they go to bed at seven, which if you haven't already, check out our bedtime routine video. I share, you know, I break down what's currently working for us in our bedtime routine, but they go to bed at seven faithfully. And then, you know, between seven and 10, seven to 11 sometimes is my time and our time. Well, we didn't get that while we were traveling because we were all in one room. And so that's, I think, one of the biggest drawbacks, at least for me personally, is like, I need my alone time. Self-care is really important to me. And it would be a huge challenge if we were co-sleeping to have some of that time, right? We would just always be together unless we were at work or school. Um, so, you know, those are important things to consider too. So I will, I want to kind of wrap this video up by leaving you with some important things to consider, right? Because everybody is different. Every family is different. And so your decision of whether or not you co-sleep or crib sleep is really up to you, right? I'm not here to tell you <laughs> what to do, but here are some things to consider. Here are some things to reflect on if you are trying to make that decision uh, or you're feeling conflicted one way or the other. And the number one thing I would consider is how is your child's quality of sleep right now, right? Um, how are they currently sleeping in whatever sleep situation they are in right now? What is the quality of their sleep? right sleep is so important to development and it is so important to behavior right I talk a lot about behavior well if they're not getting enough sleep it's going to bleed into uh, their behaviors during the day it's going to affect how they learn right how they do in school how they socialize I mean everything else right is gonna be off if they're not getting enough sleep so you really want to check in and do an honest <laughs> assessment of what is the quality of your child sleep are they are you having to wake them up in the in the morning because that's a good indication they're not getting enough sleep versus are they naturally waking up in the mornings right are they cranky and tired and fussy in the mornings or are they waking up ready to go okay so do a an honest assessment of the quality of their sleep because that i think is what should what you should base most of your decision on when it comes to sleep in my opinion and the second follow-up reflection question is, how do you generally feel about your sleeping arrangement, right? What's working, what's not working? Are you feeling like it's time to, to make a change? Do you feel ready to make a change? Um, and then along those lines, uh, if you have a partner checking in with them about how the sleeping arrangement is going for them and whether or not they are ready to make a change because it'll be so important if for example you are going from co-sleeping to crib sleeping that both of you guys are on the same page and both of you are ready to make the change um and again let me know if you'd like a video on sleep training let me know in the comments give this video a thumbs up um i will link an interesting article about uh crib versus co-sleeping that i thought was was good um, i'll link it down in the description and again don't forget to take my two minute free quiz to find out your unique parenting style it also gives you tips um, and important things to consider just based on your unique approach so i will leave the link in the description as well as the comments and that is it for this video i will see you guys in the next one bye